Mark and David each have a wealth of experience and a highly successful track record in the franchise industry, both domestically here in the US and internationally. They'll provide real insight, both from the franchise or side, and also from the franchisee side, having helped franchise candidates all over the world achieve their goal of opening franchise businesses, as well as helping companies looking to diversify into new fields of operation. So um, now I will share my screen and we will get started. I'll be speaking today on the subject of franchising as a second career. And then David and Mark will talk to you about their brands and why they fit well with this topic. During the course of the webinar, please submit your questions. We'll have a Q&A session at the end where we'll address all questions you have for Mark, David, or myself. And it would be really helpful um, when you send in the question, if you could also let us know which country you're inquiring from or which country you're in, that would be great. First, a little bit about my company, World Franchise Associates. WFA is a leading international franchise sales, marketing, development and advisory company. We're headquartered in London with international offices in strategic markets. Our WFA is owned and managed by a team of global franchise experts with many years of combined franchise development and franchise marketing, marketing experience. Um, uh, we help franchisors develop internationally and we assist individuals and companies seeking to acquire franchise rights that, for brands that meet um, their goals and market needs. As I say, my name is Martin Hancock. I'm a partner and shareholder in WFA, and I specialize in helping potential franchisees identify the right franchise opportunity for themselves and their market. I focus particularly on the GCC markets and the broader Gulf and MENA regions, though we do do business uh, worldwide. So why don't we start this with a positive quote made recently by Babette Marshauser, Marshauser, not the easiest name. Um, Babette heads up the franchising department for Dentons, which is one of the five largest law firms in the world. Franchising is the ideal strategy for growth post COVID. It offers an asset life expansion option to franch franchisors whilst giving franchisees cheap access to substantial know-how and industry expertise. Compare the average franchise signing fee to the cost of paying a consultancy to help you develop a new business model and franchising wins easily. An interesting comment, I think, from an industry expert. So, franchising as a second career. The current pandemic um, has caused business people, entrepreneurs and companies to evaluate their options moving forward. Many executives have been furloughed or squeezed out as companies rethink budgets commensurate with a drop in business. At the same time, uh, COVID related problems mean consumers are looking at new ways to interact with brands. Yes, businesses are having to adapt but problems create opportunities. And history tells us that tumultuous events are usually followed by economic upturns. And as such, 2021 should be looked at as a good time to start a business as a second career or engage in a new venture. Why is the franchise model so good for this? It's because it's not about starting from scratch. Statistics, show clearly franchise businesses have a much greater chance of success than individual startups. There are numerous reasons for this. 
when you buy a franchise, you receive the equipment, supplies, and instruction needed to start your business. Your franchisor has spent a huge amount of time and money developing a brand. And as such, franchisees benefit from an established product or service, a proven system, developed IP, marketing plans, training, ongoing support, and much more. Another reason to, strong reason actually, to consider franchising is a second career is that you are cre creating a tangible asset, which you aren't necessarily creating with a career as an employee. This gives you options when you choose to exit, either through selling your business, in, business or passing it on as to your family, as a family business. So what should you look at when you're evaluating a franchise brand? This is a big topic, and I don't have time to go into the whole process in this short presentation. So let me give you a brief overview of some of the things to consider. Sorry, I should have been on mute. There are several facets to this evaluation. However, the first thing you have to look at is yourself, your skill set, and your goals as a franchisee. The pandemic has allowed many people to stop and evaluate not only their health, but their passion, purpose, and what they want from the next stage of their business life. Deciding how to choose the right franchise opp opportunity first requires a personal inventory of your core strength and skills, and whether or not you will fit with the franchise culture you will be partnering with. As hospitality and retail reshapes itself, we're seeing a tremendous interest in the service sector, both B2B and B2C. Luckily, we have a wealth of service business experience on the panel today, and you'll hear in more detail from David and Mark what they look for in franchisees seeking to align with top service brands. In the service sector experience in the actual field of business the franchisor operates in is not typically required. As such, um, buying a franchise allows you to work in a field that you don't necessarily have any experience in, but that interests you. However, it's important to remember that it's still your business. And as such, franchisors will look at your background. Experience in sales, sales and marketing, operations, management, business development, are all relevant depending on the franchise you are considering. But, and I think Mark and David will agree with me here, most importantly, you must have the drive, desire, and belief in yourself to succeed. So let's look at a few um, criteria that apply to anyone looking to start a franchise business. What are your long-term goals? Business-wise, personally, financially. Sector, in what area of business do you want to operate and do you have the skill set required? Franchise model, do you want to operate the business yourself or create a larger ent entity managing multiple units and employees? And budget, you have to be realistic here. Look at your own sources and your, and your available sources of capital and understand the fees and costs that you will incur. Remember, the franchise fee is just the start. So let's move on to some brand considerations when you're looking at brands and, and their franchise opportunity. Successful brands are built on fundamental foundations, a profitable business model, competitive market position, committed ownership and leadership, often growth within the system, that's a good sign, and obviously the use of current technology. And then as you dig a bit deeper, you'll have to look at specifics to each brand the level of investment, the training and support, the size and demographic makeup of the territory you're being offered or available territories, 
and obviously the fee and royalty structure. As, when he, as well as any restrictions imposed by the franchisor, which obviously differ by brand, but they're mainly imposed in order to um, protect brand identity and consistency across the franchise system. So once you've made your decision to go forward with a certain brand, or if you've signed your franchise agreement, it's time to commit. One thing that successful franchisees have in common is the ability to follow a system and the belief in the franchisor franchisee relationship. Learn from successful franchisees, a great resource for any franchisee in a system and accept the challenges that you will face. There will be bumps in the road and relish the victories and the success and business ownership. Finally, I would like to highlight our website, World Franchise Center, www.worldfranchisecenter.com. World Franchise Center showcases over 150 brands from 20 countries, seeking franchise partners in the Middle East, Southeast Asia, Europe, North Africa. And this is a key resource for anyone looking to acquire franchise rights for an international brand. Um, as I say, that I have given you a brief overview here. Um, if anybody would like to discuss uh, the topic of acquiring a franchise, franchise as a second career in more detail, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, my contact is available through the Franchise Talk. And enjoy the rest of the webinar. And I look forward to taking your questions when the presentations are finished. And with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and hand this over to Mark. Uh, good morning, Martin. Good afternoon. Good, good evening to everybody else uh, around the world. Uh, Mark Jamison, I am the Chief Support and Development Officer for Fast Signs International and our uh, recently acquired brand nerds to go and I'm going to take you through that. Um, let me just bring up my presentation here. that I'm sharing. Is it sharing there okay? You are sharing, yes. All right, so. It's up here. Hmm, okay. Just make sure everybody can see my screen okay, Martin? Can you guys see it? For some reason it's not showing on my computer, but I just want to make sure. We're not seeing your presentation, we're seeing your screen, yes. All right, so let me go back here. I tested it this morning, there we go. Share. Well, it worked this morning, hold on a second here. Would, we, can, we can move on to David, Mark, if you'd like a couple of minutes to figure this. Yeah, it worked this morning. Let me try it. Let me just try it one more time here. All right, now we see it. There we go, beautiful. All right, sorry about that a little bit there. Uh, apologize for the slight delay there. Uh, let me just bring this up here. There we go, okay. Um, so I'm gonna uh, continue on the theme that uh, Martin talked about franchising as a second career. Um, thank you for everybody's patience. And I'm not sure what happened there. Of course, we tested it three times and it didn't work when I needed to go live. Uh, but excited to be here today, excited to talk to you about Fast Signs, Nerds to Go, and franchising as a second career, uh, if you will. Uh, I want to thank World Franchise Associates. Martin is actually the group and the, the gentleman who brought us to the United Arab Emirates, which we're proud to, but we have lots of other opportunities in the GCC 
including Saudi Arabia and other countries. So we'll look forward to hopefully our continued expansion with World Franchise Associates uh, throughout the world. Um, I'm going to share with you a little bit about Fast Signs, but before I did that, I wanted to talk a little bit about what we think about uh, at Fast Signs. You know, what I would suggest to anybody who is either looking for another opportunity, has been displaced, whatever, is what are your skills that you've utilized in your career and how will they translate, whether you choose Fast Signs or some other brand? Um, we typically look for, and I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes, marketing people and salespeople. Um, most franchisors, including Fast Signs and nerds to go has no interest in industry experience. We would actually rather take somebody who doesn't have industry experience and show them our methodologies and our systems and our tools and our training. Um, and so what we're really looking for in the sign and graphics business, and I'm going to talk about our model a little bit, is sales drivers. Typically, most of our franchisees and around the world, we see master franchisees who are interested in building an entity, growing, adding new locations, adding new markets. Um, and so we want somebody who has marketing experience, sales management experience, um, IT executives, any other C-level experience translates well for our brand, which is a manufacturing outside sales service oriented brand. Um, we're not looking for people to be in the weeds making signs in the back. Uh, we're really looking, looking for drivers of the business uh, and we'll certainly teach, train and have the methodology to make sure you have the right team in place, the right equipment in place and the right go to market strategy for whatever country that you choose. Um, and you know, the last line is, I'm sure everybody in here has had an amazing career and now's an opportunity to leverage it for yourself. Uh, this has been a trying time the last nine months, but we've seen a surge of franchise candidates come to us uh, that are looking to open locations for all the reasons Martin already mentioned. Let me skip and talk a little bit about who Fast Signs is. Today we're 735 locations. We are the global leader in the sign and graphics business. Uh, today we're in nine countries. Um, and uh, what do people love about our business? Number one, it's low staffing requirements. Um, this is a three to five person operation, very scalable business. You add people, you add equipment and expand as you need to. This is a business to business franchise as Martin mentioned earlier. So we are a Monday through Friday operation. Um, and many people like that, especially if they're coming off of a career where they can now spend time with their weekend with their families and friends. So whether you're a franchise, franchisee of Fast Signs or a area rep master franchise situation, uh, it leaves you the opportunity to somewhat have your weekends to yourself. We deal with professional clientele and nothing against any consumer brands out there. I've worked in them, but there's nothing better than making business owners happy and satisfied. Um, and this is a great margin business. I'm gonna talk about that in a few minutes. Um, we're really proud of our award and rankings. Four years in a row, ranked number one by Entrepreneur Magazine. I suspect when it's announced in January, we'll make it five. Uh, Martin already mentioned our awards and rankings with Franchise Business Review as uh, not only in top satisfaction, but as a great place for a second career. And then just Canadian Franchise Association, Global Franchise Award winners, uh, just across the board. And all that says to you is we have a great model, we have a great management team, and we're really ready to talk to folks that wanna grow their business. We focus on four things at Fast Signs. Our CEO, Catherine Monson, who is the chairwoman of the International Franchise Association this year and going into next year, uh, set out to these focuses for everybody in our company. And that is to increase franchise profitability. If you're a profitable franchisee or a happy franchisee, increasing the average volume, driving top line sales for our franchisees that are profitable, continuing increasing the value of the brand. We have a 22 person marketing department that works on all of our marketing and our strategies to help go to market, not only domestically, but globally. And then we work really hard, everybody in our building in Dallas on focusing on franchise satisfaction because we want happy franchisees and franchisees that wanna to continue to grow. This is just an example of the type of projects. Don't think about our business uh, as the signs that you walk in and put in yards. We're really focused on large projects. This is a $600,000 project, US dollars a franchisee did in Pennsylvania from the digital sign board to the, the flags, to the wall wraps and things of that nature. 
Uh, another example here, a company in uh, Boca Raton, Florida, VV Holdings, uh, complete rebranding for them. Uh, just a stunning look uh, and great, great uh, opportunity. So we are consulting with companies on their brand and their image. Um, one of the things that we did during COVID uh, is really we're able to pivot our business. We are an essential business. So all of our locations worldwide were open and you can see the opportunities that were created, not only to thank people who were working in the healthcare space, direct people into COVID testing centers, safety shields and things of that nature. Um, globally, we provide support across uh, the entire uh, way we support our franchisees. I won't spend a lot of time on it, but starts with site selection and real estate and continues throughout the relationship. Um, we provide a host of selling sheets in every industry. We serve 35 to 40 B2B industries. Uh, and we have sell sheets for every type of product category. We really help our franchisees drive their business and understand the industries they serve. Um, training is a big part of what we provide, four weeks of initial training, one week with a mentor, two weeks uh, it, virtually or at our headquarters in Dallas, um, and then one week um, uh, on site at your location. And um, this is what we look like in the market. We're real proud of our look and our field. We have downtown locations, urban locations, suburban locations. Um, good, clean, crisp light, very inviting looking. Uh, as I always say, not your father's sign shop. Um, and the interiors are also crisp looking. And I apologize, my dog has all of a sudden started to bark. Um, and um, so uh, nice, good looking stores there. I'm gonna skip ahead to some other signs we did uh, related to uh, the industry uh, today, COVID. Distant signage. So when you think about the sign and graphics business, today it has evolved to safety and safety shields. Uh, we expanded our products and services to address today's uh, COVID uh, and pandemic, and it has worked very well for our franchisees. So just more examples. We did some outside consumer signage and things of that nature as well. So, um, And that's our team. We have about 125 people headquartered in Dallas and around the globe supporting our franchisees. Uh, I certainly hope that you'll take the opportunity to spend some time to learn more about Fast Signs. We have a new brand, Nerds to Go. Um, and I wanna thank you all for being here. And I apologize about the dog barking, um, but I uh, look forward to answering some of your questions later today. My contact information, and I will turn it over to David. Thank you, Mark. Uh, very sure. nice presentation. Uh, thank you, Martin, for allowing uh, me to have a few minutes and to speak with this nice audience and hopefully give some insight uh, about my company as well as franchising in general. And, and thank you to Mary as well. Um, so David Grossman, I head up a company uh, based in Chicago uh, that has been in existence for 30 years, and I've been with the company for 10 years. And we are um, a very specialized uh, 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 company. Um, and I'll give a little bit of an overview and then I'll maybe share some insights for, uh, for you folks possibly looking at a second career. So Renew Systems, um, we started out as a general cleaning company um, where we cleaned homes, we cleaned restaurants, pretty much anyone who would let us in the door. And uh, we decided it was a very competitive business, uh, lots of cleaning companies, uh, in the States, but even in uh, the countries where, where you're located, um, very competitive. So we decided to specialize and we specialize in two key ways. One is the customer base, um, which in our case is the hospitality industry. It tends to be the three-star, four-star, five-star big brands like Marriott and Hilton um, and, and a number of uh, well-known companies. Um, and the other specialization is the type of work we do, which we call deep cleaning. So Think about the more challenging, high value added projects uh, like uh, carpets and marble and, and anything you can think of in a hotel that are done um, hard to do for hotel staff to do themselves. So a little more specifically here are some of our customers as you can see, it's a wide variety in the hotel industry, a number of which are in the Middle East uh, and other countries around the world. 
Um, and we have very deep relationships with pretty much all of these and our preferred vendor with many of them as well. And then we also forge relationships with the local independent hotels as well, uh, helping our franchisees uh, when they're starting the business. Uh, here is some of the services that we do, uh, ranging from carpets to, to odors when people bring a pet or smoke, to chandeliers, to marble, uh, just a wide variety of situations that tend to um, we encounter in hotels. If you think about it, when you go into a hotel, um, you pay a lot of money and you expect it to be clean. Uh, and those are things that we help the hotels do. And now with, with the, uh, the COVID situation, we also expect the hotels to be safe, uh, disinfecting. And that's a business that, that we helping our hotels uh, quite a bit with uh, right now to, uh, to, to make it a, a more enjoyable and pleasant environment for, their, for the guests, yourself, as well as the hotel staff, their employees. So here's some of the pictures, and these are actual pictures that we did of uh, work uh, before we, we did our work, and then after we did our work. So you can see that uh, we really can make things a lot shinier and uh, a lot more attractive, uh, as well as healthier, because when we get rid of dirt and other debris uh, and odors, it just makes it for a more pleasant and safe environment for, uh, for guests. Uh, and here are some of the, the disinfecting work um, brought on, especially by the COVID situation. We've been doing some of this before last year, before the virus, but it's certainly a lot more uh, in demand right now where we have special equipment um, to come in and do some spraying. So we are the partner for uh, Clorox, a certainly a well-known um, brand to use their system, which we've been trained on uh, for the hospitality industry. So it's a great system that we spray the spray a lot of the surfaces and within two minutes, uh, uh, people can walk in the room and it's, and it's killed over 99.99% of any viruses there. So it makes it a much safer, particularly during this COVID situation. Um, just a few more highlights on our, our company. Um, we this niche that we've developed these hotel cleaning. Um, we've, we, we've become the leader in what we do. And there's a few key reasons. One is we just have a wide variety of services that our customers need. Um, and by focusing on this one customer base, we've gotten to know them very well. So we know the different services hotels need. We know how they operate, what hours of the hotel we can go in, who to talk to. We have special equipment. Uh, that work well in hotels because they don't want things like uh, what are commonly used by cleaning companies, big trucks with long hoses that go through the hotels. So we have portable units that we've developed um, and we can go in and out of the rooms very quickly so they can rent them out uh, very quickly and not lose money in doing that. So a wide variety of reasons why. Um, I'd also say that hotels are very sensitive or selective to the vendors they allow inside because we're coming across their guests. So they're very cho choosy about who they, uh, what, which, uh, who they will let inside. So because we've uh, got a lot of expertise, we know uh, how to operate inside, that gives them a lot of comfort. Uh, so this is very helpful. And the lastly is just the relationships we developed among the big international brands uh, as I mentioned, a Marriott and Intercontinental and, 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 and a number of other brands. Uh, so we use those relationships when we enter a new country um, to, to help uh, start for our franchisees and get us up and running and help them big, uh, grow big businesses. Um, and, and, and we find that those relationships are very helpful. Um, so before um, I end this, I want to talk a little about things that you'll that are helpful just for you more generically because Mark and I each have good businesses. We're looking for slightly different people. Um, uh, we think we have great businesses, each of us, but we know that it's not a great business for everybody. So um, you're gonna wanna be selective who you choose just like we're selective. Um, in our case, um, uh, we, we, similar to Mark, do not require any specific experience. Um, we're uh, regarding the industry. It's more of a personality and a skill set. 
And then we'll walk through, we'll help you very quickly start the business and we're gonna be your partners throughout the entire time. So it's not like we train you and then see you later, um, but we're gonna be with you very closely through visits, through a lot of virtual training, through help on the sales side, through relationships. Um, so just uh, some specifically here are nine key factors that um, you might wanna think about if you're considering a franchise. Um, one is geography. What is your specific territory? You know, we have, uh, we, we're right now in four countries, including in, in Qatar. Um, we, we'd love to find uh, folks in, um, in the UAE, in, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, and a number of other countries in the GCC and elsewhere. We tend to give out large territories. It's typically uh, the entire country. Um, so, uh, and some, some franchises give out smaller territories and there's no right or wrong answer. It depends on the concept. Um, but, uh, but that's certainly something you want to think about. How large is the territory and is, 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 are we available in your region? Another is the track record. How successful are the franchisees? Um, so you'll want to talk to, um, and you'll do this later in the process, to the existing franchisees. Um, in our case, you can talk to someone in Qatar because it'll be fairly similar. We also are in Europe and in, in, in a few other countries. Uh, and they'll give you a sense as to what it's really like to be part of that franchise system. Um, and you'll hear it um, directly from a, a, a franchisee. Um, what are the good parts of, in our case, Renew? What are the, the, the less enjoyable parts of Renew? And, uh, and, and that'll help you make an informed decision. And then fit um, the size of the company, the culture. In our case, we have 31 franchisees. We've been doing it for 30 years. Um, uh, but we're fairly, we're entrepreneurial. We're very fast moving to help our franchisees, very responsive. Um, and, and we still kind of consider ourselves entrepreneurial, even though we have a, a, a good track record. Um, some companies are much uh, more established, more bureaucratic, um, and that could be good for you. It really depends on your, your style. Financial situation, you certainly want to be involved with a franchise system that has plenty of resources, uh, and will be around for, for many, many years. Um, and I talked about the validation talking to existing franchisees, um, but uh, the role of the franchise, uh, franchisee yourself, what are your daily activities? In our case, you would um, you'll wanna learn how to do the cleaning and, and maybe the first uh, month or two uh, be involved so you feel comfortable, but we're really looking for people that um, will step back and more oversee the team and spend most of their time uh, building the relationships with hotel managers and doing that with our support. So it's more of a sales role and we teach you how to do it. We help you do it. We provide introductions. Um, but some companies you'll, you'll be more involved in operations. In our case, you're more involved with sales. Um, Buy-in cost, uh, that's obviously an important criteria. What is the cost? But also what, what is your expected return and when is that break even? support how much, uh, how much help you are given uh, from the franchise or uh, Mark's talked about some of the support he gives. We've talked about some of the support in our case, uh, teaching you how to do the cleaning services and how to sell and provide even providing introductions. Um, and then the management, do you really get along? Do, do, we, do we like each other? Can we see ourselves as business partners for many, many years? It doesn't mean that we have to be best friends, but it means that we have to have mutual respect and, um, and be frank and open and, and understanding of each other because frankly, in any uh, company, and not every day are, uh, is everything gonna be perfect. And sometimes uh, we, 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 we like to say that um, the relationships are best when um, we have a mutual respect and can work through uh, common situations together. So these are some of the things that um, I would recommend if you're new to franchising that you consider, but, but also working with someone like Martin who has a lot of experience and he can help you select a franchise that is uh, gonna be good for your personal style, good for your budget, good for your location. Because again, you know, Mark and I each think we have a great franchise system, but um, it may not be great for each of you. So um, th th that's it, I'll, uh, I'll pause for now and, and turn it over um, to, to Martin and Mary and, um, and, we can, and we can go from there. And I'm happy to, uh, to answer any questions you have and very much appreciate your, your time and your interest. 
Thank you very much, uh, David. Thank you very much, Mark. I do have some questions here uh, for both of you. Um, the first one is for Mark. How is Fast Signs perfect for an individual franchisee? Is a single unit a poss is a single unit a possibility? Uh, great question. Thanks, Martin. Uh, where we already operate through a master or directly franchise, you can buy individual units. So that would be US, Canada, the United Kingdom. Uh, and then we operate with masters in Australia, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Malta, Italy, and Greece, and France, um, to name, I think, most of them. Uh, any new country under a master franchise agreement, we would not sell individuals. We would only sell the rights to develop the market to a highly qualified candidate who would act like a franchisor and provide the support and the training directly to individual franchisees. So it somewhat depends on the market, but globally, uh, lots of opportunities for single unit franchises and lots of opportunities to be a master franchisee, which is the only way we would enter a new market. Super, thank you. Um, question for David. What is the investment required to franchise renew? Maybe just, you know, a single unit here without, because obviously fees vary depending on the size of the territory, but that's, yeah, that's, that's sure. the question. Yeah, uh, in, in US dollars, depending on which territory, um, it, it would be uh, between approximately 150,000 to 250,000. Um, if we we're buying multiple countries, it could be higher than that, but that's approximate. And, and that amount is not just the cost of the franchise, but that's really the, uh, the entire startup uh, as well, including uh, things like buying a van and working capital, hiring a small team, but it's, it's a fairly low cost uh, model. And then our overhead is light because we don't require you to have a big uh, expensive store or restaurant, just a small office, small team of uh, several workers to start um, can be up and running quickly, relatively cost effectively, and the overhead is fairly uh, light going forward. And that's important because we don't want you to spend money where you don't need to spend it. Thank you, David. I've got a question here. I believe you've both answered, uh, though you may want to add to it. To Mark and David, who is the perfect franchise candidate for your business. Um, let me add, let me just add something to that. Why don't you speak for a, you know, 30 seconds on a day in the life of a franchisee for Renew Systems or for Fast Signs? Okay. David, go, ahead. go ahead, David. Go ahead, David. Go ahead, David. <laughs> We're both being too kind to each other, uh, too polite. <laughs> this is polite <laughs> webinar. <laughs> right. <laughs> As long as it doesn't last a long time, I'll be okay in that mode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, is, is, yeah, so just the uh, quickly, um, it might be um, uh, uh, t talking to, visiting several hotels during the day, talking to the managers, the general manager, or uh, one of the general manager's key assistants about maybe some work they want to have scheduled or uh, introducing them to Renew if they're not familiar. Um, so it'd be spending time with them uh, talking about it. It may then be stopping by to visit uh, one of your crews while they're cleaning a hotel, just seeing how everything is, and then visiting maybe a few more hotel managers to talk to them again about some work that they want to have done or might be interested. And so you would explain the overview of Renew. And then um, uh, about 10% of your day, maybe the end of the day is administrative maybe sending out uh, proposals to, Fran, uh, to to prospective customers. So it's mostly a relationship sales day and, a, and then a little bit of oversight over your team to make sure that uh, they're doing the job right, making our customers happy. Mark? All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Martin, and uh, thanks, David. You know, uh, very similar to David in some ways, I think it's a role of oversight. Uh, our franchisees typically start their day in the morning and at what we would call a work start, which would include the sales side, the production in-house team, as well as anybody else in the organization, just reviewing the orders for the day, making sure everybody's on deck, making sure the materials are there. And then most often our franchisees are gonna spend the most of their day then out networking. 
That would be actually talking to customers, maybe working with a ride along on one of their sales reps, because we encourage all of our franchisees to have an outside salesperson. Um, and then maybe it's attending a chamber lunch or some other event like that to be a part of the community and be engaged. Um, and then I would agree with David back at the shop, probably doing some administrative work, uh, making sure that the day uh, passed the way it should have and everything got taken care of from the work start meeting and prepping for the next day. But, you know, we're not looking for franchisees, as I've mentioned earlier, that are going to be in the shop making signs uh, while they understand and learn that business. Our most successful franchisees are interested in building a sales organization and driving business in the local market and being engaged in the community. That's really the best role for a fast science franchisee. Thank, but thanks to both of you, very informative. Um, I think I'll take this one. Is there a franchise market in Dubai to buy existing units rather than scratch, starting from scratch? Um, there's always th that option. Um, you have to be very careful when you buy an existing unit to uh, to know why the, why the owner is selling. Um, you also have to understand what the arrangement with the franchisor is. Um, so there are there are there is also the opportunity to purchase unit franchise licenses for GCC brands operating in the region, or as Mark said, um, from the master franchisee. Uh, in a country where that, that person has the op option to sub-franchise. Last question I have here is, what advice would you give an individual who has no experience in franchising, but is keen in investing in a franchise system in the UAE? I think that's a question for both of you. You go ahead this time. <laughs> Thanks, David. So kind. Um, the, uh, it's a, it is a good question. I, I think, and David touched on this a little bit in his presentation, and I know Martin, I think, did as well. And, you know, I think it's research, 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 you know, study the business and the country that they were maybe in. For most of us, it's domestic U.S. Look at their disclosure document, uh, review the performance of locations in the country where they're based. Um, if they have operating units in the UAE, then obviously you want to work with and understand how it operates there. But, you know, I think the answer is aside from figuring out what's right for you and your skill set, when you really come down to uh, making a decision, it's all about research. We're proud of our track record, as I'm sure David is of his and the companies Martin works with, that we're ranked by a lot of third parties, Franchise Business Review and Entrepreneur Magazine. So if you talk to Mark, I'm going to say great things about the brand. But it's also nice to have third parties that are also looking at the brand through our disclosure document and doing that research. So um, I think that's the answer. And then the real key is talk to franchisees, whether they be master franchisees or independent franchisees. They are going to say what is truly in their heart. And we're lucky that ours uh, truly believe in what we're doing and that it is a partnership. David? Great, thank you. Uh, just a couple of points, because I think uh, Mark summed it up very well, is the research aspect. And you feel free to ask a lot of questions. If you're not um, getting good answers or you're not getting access to answers, they're not allowing you to talk to many franchisees or not answering your questions in full detail, then that's probably not a good sign. So um, uh, no pun intended, uh, fast signs. That, that's probably not a good sign that if you're not getting answers to your questions. Um, so th that's very important there. Um, Mark and myself, we, we've done this process many times with people like yourself that come in, um, maybe uh, not sure what to, to do, what to ask, because they've never gone through the process. So we can help you walk through the process. Maybe Martin will be your advisor on it. Um, and we can help you understand what are the important things to know and get you answers to those. This doesn't take years. It, it really just takes a matter of uh, weeks to, to a couple of months. Um, to do it. Um, and, and I think you'll have answers to a lot of your questions and, you, and you'll get to know us fairly well during that process. And that's important because you're, you're going to be with us for many, many years and hopefully it works out well. One other thing I'll, I'll mention, and this applies to, to both of our brands, is, um, um, is that uh, while I think um, in, in many cases the franchise Z actually operates the business, it doesn't always have to be that way. Um, there's some situations where maybe you hire uh, a manager and take a very passive role. 
Um, I, I shouldn't speak for Mark on that, but certainly in my case, that's a possibility. As long as there's someone full-time running, running the business, it, it doesn't have to be yourself doing that. Super, Super thank you. So a couple more questions just popped up for Mark. Um, how many fast signs branches are there in UAE? Uh, today we have two uh, that are open and operating under a master who has plans to develop more and they are now approved to be sub franchising. So we Great. think we probably have opportunity for eight to 10 locations in that market. And uh, those would be individual units at this point, other markets in the GCC like Saudi and Bahrain and others that we've talked a little bit about would be open for a master franchisee, which means you would own the rights, open a location, and then typically sub-franchise. Super, that's great to know. Um, and then uh, also for Mark, what are the franchise fees and royalties? I don't know whether we want to, I mean, you can only take that on a single unit basis right now, because they're probably yeah. the single unit, they're probably the same, right? Yeah, I mean, I can talk a little bit about it as it relates to, you know, where we individually franchise in the US, uh, Canada, and even the UK, if you were going to open up a brand new single unit location, you would be spending uh, somewhere around the equivalent of 250, 250,000 US dollars, that would be what I call key in the door. Now with master franchisees for every other country, there's a master fee up front. And that depends on the size of the country uh, and the number of locations and the opportunity. So I really couldn't get into that. That would be something that uh, we would talk to you about through Martin. Um, and we'd be happy to do that. And royalties differ slightly as well. Domestically, they charge six, we charge 6% royalties and 2% that goes into a national advertising fund that funds TV and other things of that nature. So, um, but if we have a master franchisee, if somebody's interested in that, they set their own royalties within those parameters as a guideline. Yeah, thank you. And as I said earlier, just set up a inquiry and we'll be happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation about fast signs or renew systems. Um, I think that does it. I'd like to say a very big thank you to Mark and David for making this an interesting and informative webinar today. Obviously, thank you also to Mary and Wissam and all the team at, uh, at the Franchise Talk. And just a couple of things before we sign off. The next edition of the Franchise Talk will be January the 12th. If you're on uh, on the Franchise Talk communication list, you'll receive an invitation for that. And then the Global Franchise Market Expo, which is the premier franchise show in the UAE, is taking place on November the 15th and 16th. I'll certainly be there, and I hope to see some of you out there at the event as well. So I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed, and look forward to speaking to you soon. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Have a good evening.